Dr. P.K. Ghosh about some of these circumstances. What if it doesn't land uh, on all four feet? What if it lands on only two? Or what if it overturns? I mean, as someone who didn't study science in any serious way, those things sound very scary to me. What happens in some of these circumstances, sir? Uh, well, uh, what I have heard is um, that even if one of the legs slightly breaks or there is a problem in it, but still they have strengthened the leg so much. In fact, they have strengthened the leg to almost one, it can take the uh, thrust of one meter per second more than it was earlier. And um, I think uh, that is what uh, they are hoping that these legs, as you are showing now, will be able to absorb uh, whatever is the thrust which comes, whatever is the speed at which it comes. Of course, they have laid down the uh, uh, the parameter for the speed. They say that even if it comes at a speed of, let's say, one to two meter per second, it can withstand the uh, pressure. Um, that is, I'm talking of the vertical uh, uh, speed. Uh, if there is a sway of, let's say, 0 0.05 meters, still they can... Uh, it can withstand. So I think uh, all this has been inbuilt into the lander. And uh, I really see no reason as to why. Of course, as Amitabha mentioned, that uh, if the slide doesn't open or if there is some unusual uh, event which happens, that is possible in anything, anywhere. So one, uh, uh, of course, one features in certain uh, contingencies, but it's absolutely impossible to feature out all contingencies. That Chingappa so, just shows how the slightest error at any moment can upend all these plans. I mean, you could have gone, engineered a soft successful landing, and then, like uh, Dr. Avitav Ghosh was saying, it gets stuck in the parachutes and the rover doesn't come down, and voila, you're stuck. Yes, space is unforgiving. You know, you could be 99.9% .9 there, but that 0.1% can make the difference and destroy it. But I think what ISRO is targeting are three things, essentially in Chandrayaan-3. One, to land on the moon, right? That by itself is an achievement. Two is to get a rover out, as Amitabh was saying, and what it can do. And three is, of course, doing the scientific experiments, both from the lander and it. Now, even if we do land, and as uh, my friend was talking about the difficulty of it, what they have done is, uh, this is, you know, it's very interesting, even the legs, the, the way the, the lander is, He's got this honeycomb arrangement with aluminium. So it's like a shock absorber. So when it slams down, what he's mentioned is that what ISRO has done is redundant uh, systems that's there. So they have built this much stronger than the earlier Chandrayaan-2 uh, lander that was to be there. Two, as the way uh, Dr. Somnath describes it, they've made it very rugged. So all these uh, various anomalies that could arise, they've calculated them. Of course, it's very difficult. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, anything could uh, turn it around. There could be a malfunctioning valve here or there, and you could run into major issues. But what they've done is, in each of these stages, these critical things, whether it's the propulsion, you, you know, making sure the thrusters, you have enough fuel, you have enough, uh, you know, if one fails, the other can take over, uh, even the direction thing. The same thing with control and guidance. Last time, there was a software error. The software could not, because of the excess speed that came in, it could not calculate, and it started tumbling out of control. So that they've built in and worked the algorithms and said, okay, if, if it is traveling at this speed, we have this much leeway. So they've given almost twice the leeway that they had the last time. And finally, when the landing and the procedure of landing, there again, they've made sure that, okay, if we have not got, they've got enough fuel. So if we're not getting the right space, last time what happened was, as it started moving, it suddenly realized that it was at a great distance. It, the speed was wrong. So instead of decelerating, which is what you're trying to kill the, the acceleration that's there, it actually accelerated. And when, for, you know, the crash was almost immediate, uh, maybe 500 meters away from the actual landing site. So this time what they worked out is, okay, if we're not getting it, it's got enough sensors, enough uh, inertial guidance systems and everything else to say it's not happening, enough fuel to go and land. So I think what ISRO has done, and I think that's the reason why when you speak to these scientists is that they've worked out most of the contingencies. Of course, there's always the unknown unknown that could happen, as Dr. Sivan had told you, uh, you know, in, in his interview, and that is something that no one can plan for. Lieutenant General A.K. Bhatt, Director General of the Indian Space Association, what could this lunar probe mean for India's space ambitions? 
You know, there's so many space tech firms that are now trying to do interesting things for India's space program, part of global space programs. What could this potentially mean for India's quest in space? Oh, definitely it will give a fillip and more opportunities because, you know, the next big thing in space is the lunar economy. And lunar economy means everything related to, as in the future, maybe a decade or more, when we make space stations, we make a colony, uh, we do mining there. For all that, there would be a lunar economy where private players would be involved. And in India, as you know, after June 2020, uh, the government has opened space to private players. We are, of course, in the nascent stage there. Uh, we've just had our suborbital sub launch. We have some of our startups who have made satellites which are there in space. But in the future, we would be seeing private players as partners of this lunar economy, which would be global and would, which would involve all activities, a lot of ro robos, maybe for mining, maybe construction activity, and many more. But that is where the future is. Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, sure. if you mine on the surface of the moon, what could you potentially get which is useful for the Earth? And this whole idea of colonizing the moon, which is being spoken of so nonchalantly, how much is this a matter of space and science fiction, and how much of it could be reality? I think 50% um, is science fiction. Um, I'll tell you what is possible and what is not possible. Okay, what you is what is possible is like say if you go to Antarctica now, um, I think a lot of nations maintain a whole year access to it. So people live in a habitation module. They are having pizza. They have a refrigerator. They're watching cable TV. It's just like on Earth. In you can have something on the moon like that. In addition to everything that you have on Earth, they'll have oxygen. That's what Jeff Bezos is trying through his company, Blue Origins. Now, that is rational and doable. That is what NASA could also do. That's what the space station is. It's 250 miles above the Earth. Uh, people live there. Um, 365 days, astronauts, they go come and do experiments. That is possible. Lunar economy is something, it's even a step further. So things like Disney World um, say it is possible. Elon Musk is developing something called Starship. Starship would reduce the cost of moon travel by maybe 1,000. So if you could buy and take a ticket to, to the moon for one crore, would you visit it once in your lifetime? Well, if you got a million customers like you, then there will be a tourism industry. Would you, Amitabh, go trust uh, Elon Musk to take you to the moon if you had a crore you wanted to spend on this? See, I'm not into, I have a lot of astronaut friends, but you know, it's a, actually not as exciting as it sounds. It's quite a dangerous thing. So you go to work <laughs> and you might not come back. So I prefer being a scientist on the ground. But, um, but yeah, coming back to it, it is possible. If you thought of Disney World, uh, you see Disney World today, when Walt Disney made his first pitch uh, as a venture capital thing, uh, that I'm going to build this resort in the middle of nowhere, uh, where people would come to see a mouse. Well, it would have sound ridiculous, but it has happened today. So people do go there once in their lifetime in the U.S., right? So, so it's possible, but it is not a near-term natural progression. It is still science, science, science fiction. How many years out is this? 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? Is there a way of knowing? Elon Musk has so, a lot of ambition, uh, if, a lot of money. If, well, the money, he has to get market participation. He has to get the mass market. His money would not really be sufficient. It will depend. See, uh, he's testing Starship. I think he has at, what, 16 failures, uh, but he's still on the way to go. Starship is a, a critical component of the U.S. return on 26. If his Starship uh, uh, is successful and it reduces the cost by a thousand percent like it does, then the space frontier would suddenly be far, like wide open.